All right, folks, the very first thing to point out in this immediate area, of course, we see another large overhead structure, this time the more modern, concrete and steel. So this is the second van of coal that we're crossing on our walking tour. We actually have one more to cross through. Now, if you're curious to the names, the previous one is the orchard vein. This one where we're standing now is the primrose. The one that we crossed through in the back of the vein is actually named the diamond vein. Now, a little quick disclaimer, no anthracite coal will not ever turn into diamonds. Even though they both are primarily carbon, it took a very different set of circumstances for them each to form, and they have a very different crystalline structure. It's kind of hard to burn a diamond if you've ever tried. All right, so now we'll find a lot of very unique pieces of equipment while we're inside this mine. And the first I'll begin to cover is a small four-wheeled cart beside me here. Folks, this is what is known as a go devil. Now, of course, when it was in operation, it wouldn't have been staged nicely like it is here today. It would have been riding on the floor in a set of tracks. You may have noticed those tracks as we were walking up to this point. A narrower set inside of the ones that we rode in on today, folks. Well, they're, they're the tracks for the Go Devil. Riding there, this worked on a counter pulley system. So you would have had two cables running out to a series of pulleys that ran all along the floor off to the side of the tracks. Then they would have routed back to the Go Devil. It allowed one control operator standing right where you are in the red just to send this cart back and forth. This was a very busy area. We had multiple gangways, coal cars would have been coming from different ways. Everything from the lower levels would have been coming up from our shaft. Everything from further back on our first level also would be coming just rolled through those cages on our shaft. So as soon as the company could figure out the technology for a Go Devil, well it eliminated the mules in this immediate area completely. You see, it's kind of difficult to explain to an animal. This area is busy. Pay attention and watch out. Well, if you don't move out of the coal car's way, they don't really care much, folks. They'll run you right over. And the company really valued their mules. So, again, as soon as they figured out how to limit them, that's where this came about. That little lever in the center allowed you to travel right underneath the coal car in one direction. It would pop up as soon as you were out behind it, latch up to it, and you could send it right up into that staging area. Now, once you were down there, you simply just had to change direction. Come and pick up your next car. Now we just have one man down in our staging area, picking up and dropping pins, linking all the cars up. It was very much like an assembly line production here, folks. You have one person doing one job, and we keep moving down the line. Now, frequently, it was about seniority. You'd learn the different jobs, and you'd rotate through them. Now, the Sco Devil here, just like many other pieces of equipment, were originally powered by steam prior to our modernization. It was that modernization that brought the electric equipment that we see resting here to this very day. Now, do we have any questions up until this point, folks? I know it's a lot of information to take in in a short period of time, and I've gotten awfully good at spitting it out in a short period of time. <laughs> All right, follow me a little further. We can gather anywhere along this iron fence, folks. Just don't start up the ramp quite yet. Oh, wow. 